Hey friends, welcome back to Simply Home and Harvest, Simply Home for the Holidays. I'm Jen, I'm so glad you're here to join me today. And today is a moment that a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm going to give you the Christmas home tour of our house. And I thought about maybe just taking you with me on the decorating journey and letting you see it come together piece by piece. But honestly, I don't know how long that would have taken to get the video up because I have changed it about 20 times. And so now that I have it like I want it, I thought I'm just going to go ahead and film it and let you see it the way it is. Now this year I changed things up just a little bit. In the past several years, I've gone with the black and white and the red and black buffalo check pattern on just about everything. I did keep that pattern, but I moved it around the house some. And I was just really inspired this year by bringing in a lot of the outside elements, pine cones and fresh greenery. We dried some fruit, made our own gingerbread ornaments. And I really wanted to go with the gingerbread theme in the kitchen, which we did. I cannot wait to show you how it all turned out. So it's very much a red and green traditional Christmas look. I could not be happier with it. And it's something that we'll probably stick with for the next several years because it took a lot of work to kind of pull it all together and to add new ribbon and to switch things out. So I'm going to live with it for a while. And um, I know I'm always telling you guys, use what you have, use what you have. And we did use a lot of what we had, but probably this year, um, more so than the last several years, I did buy some new pieces just because I wanted to change things up a bit. But in doing that, I also got rid of several pieces, passed them on to family and friends. And so I feel good about that. I don't have a whole lot of Christmas that I'm gonna have to put away in storage, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a little bit more probably than you saw at our house last year. I did decorate our bedroom this year. That's not something I normally do. And um, we just kind of went all out. So I, I'm going to stop chatting and go ahead and show you. I thought I would start over here in the corner right as you enter our home and this shelf you guys have seen it several times if you've watched other home tours but this I purchased probably uh, 20 years ago maybe um, it was a home interior piece that I painted and distressed a little bit and I love it I love how it's very farmhouse looking and that is definitely my decorating style some background noise I'm switching to voiceover for the rest of the video the nativity scene that you see here I purchased from Hobby Lobby a couple of years ago I love the simplicity of it and really just wanted to keep the shelf very simple and the picture of the church there it came from Walmart a couple of years ago the little peace sign I got at Dollar General this year and then that tree came from Hobby Lobby several years ago it's a beautiful tree it glistens when the light hits it so I did not have to add any pre-lit lights or anything to it um, and I just think it's so sweet so simple I love it for this area and then you'll see down below here in just a minute that we've moved our electric fireplace that we keep in our kitchen over to this corner now I'm not sure it's gonna stay here I think this is its temporary home so I've just got a napkin holder sitting on top of it for right now um, because I really didn't want to put any decorations and we kind of move whatever's on our table whatever our centerpiece is to this area anyway but let me tell you about this little mailbox or napkin holder this belonged to my grandparents and growing up 
I remember going to their house every Christmas and they kept their mail in it. And mostly this time of year, it was full of Christmas cards. And lo I loved going and looking through the Christmas cards to see who all had sent them cards. And so after my grandparents passed on, it was handed down to me and it was broken. And so my husband took it and fixed it and we just use it now as a napkin holder. Um, but I love it. I think it's so sweet to have that and it just so many precious memories attached to it. Moving right next to our shelf is our buffet. This is another piece that was passed down to me from my grandparents several years ago. We refinished it. I know you guys have seen it many, many videos now and you'll know this is my favorite piece that we have in our home. Um, but on top of it, I wanted to keep it very simple again this year. And I purchased this runner last year at the end of the Christmas season from Hobby Lobby. I think I paid 90 cents for it. It was 90% off and it had to go home with me. I love it. It's a flannel material and it's just so warm and cozy. I just wasn't sure where to put it this year. I didn't need it on the table, but I thought it warmed up the space just a little bit. And there you see, I'm giving you a better look at this piece of furniture that is just so beautiful. I love the antique touches on it, the keyholes there, um, just so perfect. And I uh, will never part with this piece. I hope it would be passed on to my family. The picture that you see there with the red truck, that came from Walmart several years ago. I love this mirror that sits above our buffet. And every morning when I come in and see the lit Christmas tree in it, I just love that whole picture of being able to see the tree and the reflection of the mirror. The frosted church that you see there came from Walmart a couple of years ago. I've added a flameless candle to it with a timer. Gotta love those timers. Makes everything so convenient, especially at Christmas. And then this year, I am just all about putting a tree in a basket or a bucket, as you'll be able to see. But this frosted tree came from, I believe, Hobby Lobby. If not Hobby Lobby, it was Walmart several years back. I added it to a basket that I already had and then tucked in a decorative napkin. And I just think that is just the cutest look. And so I'm all about putting trees into containers this year. going to start at our kitchen table and this year just like last year we're using an outdoor centerpiece that we gathered from things that we already had on hand and most of what we got in our own yard so I headed out to our bank where we have lots of running cedar growing there between our house and our neighbor's home I think the proper term for it is juniper but you can see all the leaves and things that have gathered there so it definitely needs to be cleaned out but I was able to get what I needed and that was about 15 sprigs of the garland now I did take it back to the porch to give it a good shake I got a lot of excess water out of it because it had rained a lot the day before also wanted to shake all the bugs out we did not want any of those critters coming in especially to our Thanksgiving meal I mean how horrible would that have been for bugs to be crawling across the table as our guests were there to enjoy Thanksgiving. So make sure when you do this, give it a good shake. I had this basket already and just laid a strand of lights inside of it that are on a timer and they're just very uh, small like fairy lights. So they're not 
they're not cumbersome and I was able to just kind of pull them up through the garland you'll see I had some pit berry garland there we dried some oranges which I'm going to show you that in the next video I've got some cinnamon sticks and some other uh, garland like other picks that had cranberries on them that I had on hand. So I'm just layering that garland right in the basket over the lights and I'm pulling the lights up through as I go. And then we're going to add in our beautiful pine cones. Some of these I already had on hand, but the majority of the pine cones that I'm using this year came from a friend that gathered them in their yard from one of their evergreens and they're absolutely beautiful. I loved the way the pine cones look this year. I don't know if they look like that every year, but they had almost a white frost on them that looked like someone had sprayed snow, but that is just nature's way of decorating them. And so they were just a beautiful touch. I'm adding in all of those picks and the pine cones there. And then I'm going to add in some cinnamon sticks just to kind of give it some more texture, but also to add in that lovely fragrance of cinnamon to it. And then we have our dried oranges that I placed a few in there. But I'm just, I love the way this turned out. I love that you can go right into your yard, use what you already have, and make a beautiful centerpiece. And, you know, if I had gone to a florist to get this done, it would have easily probably been about $100. But, you know, here we are using what we have for a free and beautiful centerpiece. Now you'll see a white tablecloth there because we did use that for Thanksgiving, but I have since removed it and kind of wish I had kept it on the table. Our table is very much in need of some stripping down and restaining. Maybe that's a project we'll get to this winter. The runner I have on the table is from Marshalls. I did pick that up this year. It's brand new. It goes with my red and green theme and I had no idea of this until I got home with it, but it matches perfectly to the ribbon that we use for the Christmas tree. So this is our main Christmas tree. I think my husband counted eight Christmas trees in our home this year. They're not all decorated like this one. This is definitely our focal point Christmas tree and the one that holds all of our very special ornaments. I love, love, love my Christmas tree. However, it is getting old. I think I've had it for about 20 years now. It's one that comes in all the separate pieces and you have to put it together limb by limb. It's not pre-lit, so I have to wrap all the lights. I think we counted 1,300 lights <laughs> that are on it this year because I do like to do the floral wrapping technique where you wrap each branch with lights. I just love the way that looks. And this bow, let's talk about this bow. I'm gonna show you how I made it. Now I wanted to switch out the ribbon this year. Last year I had a black and white and red and black with the red uh, truck holding a Christmas tree ribbon. And so this year I wanted to go with a different type of ribbon. So I got this beautiful plaid ribbon at Michael's. I got about three spools of it. I don't think I use all three right here. But then I also paired it with a Christmas tree ribbon. The ribbon has Merry Christmas written on it and that came from Hobby Lobby. I thought those two complemented each other well. I saw this technique on a reel and so I thought I would recreate it to make this tree topper. I'm not sure I like the technique of making this bow. I have another technique that I've used over the years to make bows. And so I would probably just go back to that one next time, but I thought I would give this a try. It definitely worked, but it ended up that I made a bow that was much larger than I anticipated making. So I'm gonna give you the instructions on how we did this one, and then you can make up your mind whether or not you wanna use this technique, or I may actually show you in another video a way of how I can make a bow a little bit differently that doesn't require um, all of these steps. So the first step is to cut your extra long pieces of ribbon that are going to be your tails. So I did cut those, those are off to the side there, and I did 
three of each of the colors of ribbon. Um, so that's about four, three to four feet um, of each ribbon. Now the little strips you see me cutting there, that's 26 inches. And I think I ended up cutting 10 to 12 pieces of each one of those patterns. And let me tell you, that was too many. <laughs> the, the instructions that I was following, it was three different patterns of ribbon. And I think they cut like 10 pieces of each. So it's a nice size tree topper bow. If you want a really large tree topper bow that makes a statement, definitely this is the one for you. And so of those strips that I cut, I'm just doing like a little tail on the each on the end of each piece of ribbon. So I guess you call that a V cut. And I just took the time to do that on each one. Definitely some fabric scissors are going to be worth um, investing in for this project. I'm also just firing the ends there to make sure that we don't have any frays since I did cut the ribbon. I'm using a wired ribbon and that is also very important. That's going to help your bow keep its shape. So definitely when you pick your ribbon out, make sure that it has the wired um, edging to it. Now I'm taking each one of these 26 inch pieces of ribbon and I'm just folding the tops down, not the cut end that I just finished off there, but the other end, just fold that down probably about a third of the way. Now you'll see my ribbons are not exactly the same length, so I should have taken more time to do that, but it, it, it all works out in the end. So just fold down each piece of ribbon. So our next step is to gather all of our pieces of ribbon together. Now, this is something that you really have to take the time to do and make sure you do not let go of the other pieces of ribbon as you are gathering your extra pieces. Also, it's important to note that you will need a zip tie or a good piece of paddle wire and you'll want to have that already ready for you before you start this process. It is my experience that the zip tie definitely works better here. So if you've got that on hand, I would recommend using it instead of the paddle wire. So once we get all these pieces gathered together, we're going to zip tie them and make sure you pull it very, very tight. I'm sorry, I don't have, there we go. I didn't have the greatest angle there uh, showing you piecing those together, but you, you can see it here. Just pull that very, very tight and you can go back in later and, and clip the excess off. Now we're gonna flip our bow over and you just want to pull your ribbon apart just to kind of space it all the way around the bow. That way when you flip it back over, you have a nice foundation there. And this is the part where we will attach our long pieces of ribbon that will trail down into the Christmas tree. So basically I'm just tucking those in and then I'm gonna use another zip tie, insert it through the other one, and then pull tight. And you're not gonna see any of this underneath, so don't worry about what it looks like. It's basically there to hold everything together. Now, I did fail to mention this, but make sure if you are using a ribbon with print on it that you've got the print going in the direction that you want it as it is coming down the tree. It would be bad for you to get it upside down and then attach your bow at the top and realize your mistake later. Now we're going to turn it over and you're just going to pull all of those loops out to form your bow. This is the fun part, but you can see that was a whole lot of loops to pull out of that bow. So I think if I made another one, I would probably reduce the size of it, but this one definitely made a statement. It's just, it had too many tails there coming off of it. So I don't really know. I did tuck them into the tree. Um, so they weren't a big deal when I got it on top, but I think that was just from using just way too many pieces of ribbon probably for this project. But it turned out beautiful and I love it. It suited this tree very well and I just tucked those pieces of ribbon down into the branches. I also made some other little bundles using uh, three different patterns of ribbon and then I took a pick, a cranberry pick and clipped it into different pieces and just inserted that into those little bundles and you'll see them throughout the tree and just stuck them into some of those bare spots. I used the same natural garland that I have for the last few years. I picked that up at Hobby Lobby years ago. It's got little pine cones, cranberries, and cinnamon sticks running throughout it. I did have some black and red ribbon, but I did remove that for this year. And you can see some of my favorite ornaments. I think I showed you that one last year, but that one's really special because growing up, it was always our tradition to go out and cut down our own Christmas tree. 
We don't do that anymore. We have our artificial trees. This one I also love of Baby Jesus. It connects to the light strand. And those are probably two of my favorite ornaments. I have many, many favorites. I love pulling out my ornaments every year and just remembering the memories and the stories that go with each one. I'm sure that you feel the same way. Down below our tree at the bottom, the tree skirt that I use is just a piece of fabric that matches back to the ribbon. And then over here beside the tree, I've got this little stool that was actually made by my brother in shop class when he was in high school and my mom let me borrow it this year. So it is a good, probably 30 years old, <laughs> but I thought it was so sweet, so cute. And it was exactly what I needed um, to give this lantern a lift. Now the lantern, I've had that for a while that came from QVC. It's part of the Valerie Parhill collection. The star I bought from an artisan here in town that makes these out of tobacco stakes. And then this gift box I had, but it had black and red checked ribbon on it. And I just took our ribbon that you saw when I made the bow, I took the excess ribbon and all I did was tuck it around the bow that was already existing there. And you can't even tell, it looks like it was made that way. So happy with the way this came together and it turned out and we're going to move on to the den next. going to start here with the end table and then we'll work our way around the room now because this is our den it's our family room and the room we live in most we have to keep it functional so there's not a lot on this table because it's normally full of reading glasses and cups and all the things this tree of course I have stuck it in a container I picked up this little cookie tin from Dollar General this year and the napkin was a set of four that I also picked up at Dollar General and then stuck the tree down in it. And I just love that look. I think it's just cute and cozy. And like I said, kept it simple. This is where Tim lives most of the time. Our shelf in the corner is the home to our very, very productive house plant. I am learning varieties of house plants, so I'm not sure what kind this one is, but it's the kind that trails and takes over. <laughs> and I need to propagate it very soon. This is a very nostalgic room and I've pulled out a lot of the vintage pieces that we've loved for years and years. And this snowman is no exception. It's been in our lives for many years and I believe it originally came from Kirkland's, but I love using it every year. And then the sign beside it, it's a wonderful life. That I picked up a couple of years ago at Walmart, but I love that old feel that it adds. And of course the movie that it's an ode to is definitely a family favorite. Like I mentioned earlier, this room is definitely holding some of our favorite and older Christmas decorations. And this next shelf has one of the oldest decorations in our home. And it's a swinging Santa and Mrs. Claus. And I've had it since I was a child. My mom gifted it to me a couple of years ago. And let me just um, turn it on so you can have a listen. This room is full of lots of Christmas throws and pillows because we 
like to hang out in here the majority of our time. It's also home to our fun tree, as the kids call it. And I thought about changing it up this year, but they wanted me to keep it exactly the same. This tree I picked up from a yard sale a couple of years ago for $10, and it is just so much fun to decorate. I use a lot of the more vintage pieces, some red beaded garland, and a lot of like the old fashioned Santa Claus and like your more, um, I don't know, old fashioned looking ornaments. And then some of the kids personalized ornaments go on this tree, but it is fun. I also had these cards that I printed out, these old fashioned flashcards. I got those off of Etsy a couple of years ago, and I think they just add a fun touch to the tree. And then at the very base of the tree, Tim built me this box a couple of years ago to hide the bottom of the tree. And then I just took a piece of fabric that I already had and just tucked it down around it to create a tree skirt. Oh, I also have some jingle bells that we made into a garland last year. We just threaded that with some old twine. And I think that's all that's in there. Some word ornaments, but just, just a fun, cozy little tree. When we take all of our Christmas decorations down for the season, I do like to keep this tree up with no decorations on it. I just think it adds just such a cute, um, cozy winter touch to that corner. Now we won't start counting down the days till Christmas until probably December the 1st but I did go ahead and set our sign up in this cute little chair that has been in our family for many, many years. That belonged to my grandparents. It sat in their house, and I remember every year, at least one of us grandchildren was sitting in it, so it's very special. And then coming across the room here, you'll see that we've got our stockings already hung, and I found this beautiful vintage art on YouTube. Just look up Christmas art. For your TV and this stays on for a couple of hours. I thought that snowman was just so pretty. I know a lot of the TVs now you can get like with the frames around them and all but that is something that you can add um, especially when you're hosting parties or events. So I also want to keep this spot very simple and I'll just point out the decorations as we go along. But first, let me draw your attention to this lit garland. My intention was to put this around my kitchen window, but I struggled so many times with it falling on my head that I just decided that this would be a better spot for it. I bought the snowflake decoration on clearance last year for probably a dollar. That is the best time to buy your Christmas decorations. The little snowman decoration there came from a friend. And this count your blessings sign I've had for many years. And it reminds me so much of my favorite movie, White Christmas, and the song that Bean Crosby sings, Count Your Blessings Instead of Sheep, and You'll Fall Asleep Counting Your Blessings. I love that song, and I love that movie so very much. And now I'm thinking I should go watch it when I finish editing. <laughs> I did realize that this frame needs a picture. And then our stack of blocks there and the little vintage guy holding the Christmas tree are just so sweet. It reminds me of old Christmases, and I thought that was a good little spot for it. It's right there in front of our Young Living Essential Oil Diffuser, and that's the essential oils that I'm using right now, Christmas Spirit. That's, it smells so good. It smells like a fresh cut Christmas tree with a little bit of cinnamon and cloves mixed in. And then this lit house you've seen many times. It's one of my favorite decoration pieces for all seasons and I moved it into this room. I thought that was a good spot for it right in front of this beautiful picture that I got from Dollar General several years ago for $10 and I like to keep that throughout up throughout the winter season. This little sign and Christmas tree I think came from Hobby Lobby and so that's just about it for this little area of the home. I will show you our cozy rocking chair over here. This rocking chair, I've shared the story with you several times before, but it belonged to my great grandfather and legend has it that he would sit here every evening and smoke his pipe, not here, but in this chair every evening and smoke his pipe. And so it's a very special piece and I'm glad we have it in our home. So this is one of those brand new pieces I was telling you about. I bought this tree originally thinking that it would go in our bedroom, but decided to go a different route in there. 
and this was a really good price. I think I bought this at Aldi earlier in the season for about $20. It did not come with a basket. I did end up purchasing this basket at Dollar General to sit it down inside of, and then I filled it with these little snowballs that we already had on hand. Just below that in front of our tree is an old vintage white truck that I've had for many years. It came from QVC and I filled it with those beautiful pine cones like the ones we use in our centerpiece. So I love the tree over here in this corner. I think we'll keep that one up all winter long as well. Then our end table is very simple. I wanted to keep it that way again so that we would have room to put our things. This house plant is real and I put it down in this snowman bucket that we already had. And that's pretty much it for this room. My family will be happy to know that they can now move back in and add all their clutter back into the space. That's the hard part filming these videos is making sure that everybody keeps the area clean and the noise level is down and you know, just one of those things, but uh, lots of fun to decorate. I enjoy it every year. And though it does sometimes cause me more stress than I should allow it to, I'm thankful that I get to decorate and make our home warm and cozy for the holidays and that I get to share it with you. That's the really neat part. I'm enjoying this journey so much and I hope that you are as well and that something you've seen today will inspire you to decorate your home and you don't have to have a lot in your budget. Just use what you have to make it your own. Now I want to give you a better look at the sign that we picked up on clearance at Hobby Lobby last year at the end of the season. I think I only paid three or four dollars for it and I love it right there. I think it's perfect for that space right over our den. Well friends, I'm going to have to leave you here today and we'll just have to pause our Christmas tour. We will do a part tour, a uh, part tour a part two of our Christmas tour next time. And I'll show you the kitchen, show you the bedroom, maybe some other little touches that we did around our house and our bathrooms and downstairs. Uh, so stay tuned for that next time because our video will just be way too long. Plus I'm losing sunlight. The family will be ready for dinner soon. And y'all know how that is. We have got to make that top priority, take care of our families and get dinner on the table first. So we'll just do filming again another day, but I hope you all are having a wonderful holiday season so far. Can you believe that we are already here at the end of November going into December? Time flies, this year has gone by so quickly and I'm just wanting it to slow down and I just wanna cherish all the moments leading up to the end of the year and up to Christmas. So I hope that you all are enjoying your season. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know our family did. Again, one of those things that goes by so quickly, but we were so blessed to be able to host Thanksgiving in our home this year. And we had a lot of family with us and it was just such a blessing to all be together. So I hope that you were able to experience that as well. So I will see you next time with more from the home. We'll be doing some DIY projects. We'll be decorating some more. We'll be making uh, some wonderful uh, Christmas recipes. I'll show you some gift ideas. Lots coming up in the next few weeks. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please do so so you don't miss out on the content. Plus, I would love to have you join our YouTube family here. It's just such a delight and a joy to be able to get to know you all and to meet you all. Thank you for leaving the sweet comments and continue to chat with me. Let me know where you're watching from. And until next time, remember to live simply, use what you have, enjoy the moments you've been given, and I will see you all in the next one. Merry Christmas, friends.